Hello students, welcome to Cinema Academy YouTube channel. So today I have got for you a J advanced level question, a beautiful piece of question. And mind you, on the exterior it might look like a very scary problem, but by the time we are done with the solution, I'm sure you would find this problem a really, really easy problem at heart. So let's read this problem first. So it's a paragraph based question which says that let f of x be f1x minus twice of f2x where f1 and f2 functions have been defined for you over here. And they have another function g of x which is basically utilizing your f of x and basically they will ask you three questions following up that concept. Now guys and girls, so first of all, what do you understand from the max min? Now these are the special type of functions which have been used very, very frequently in the JE advanced exams. So let us understand what is the meaning of min max function. So let's look at F1x. So F1x talks about min of x square and mod x. So F1x talks about min of x square and mod x when x is between minus one to one and x squared when mod x is greater than one. So what do you understand from the min function? It is very simple guys and girls. It just says that f1x, what does it do? It takes the minimum of the two values, which is x squared and mod x for a given value of x. For example, if I put x value as half, so it'll compare whether half square is more or mod of half is more. Obviously mod of half is more, so x square, which is half square, will be assigned to f1x for x equal to half. So how do we actually know this function easily without having to put the values of x? So here what do we do is, the steps are quite simple. We basically make the graphs of both these functions on the same xy coordinate system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the graph of x square, which is a parabola, and mod x, which is a V-shaped curve, okay, just between minus 1 to 1. So I'm just making this graph between minus 1 to 1. So this part is minus 1, this part is 1, okay, because my subdomain here is between minus 1 to 1. Now, min means which of the two graphs is the lowermost. So basically, you have to take that part of the graph, which is the lower of the two graphs. So you can see here clearly x square wins that. So x square is the lower of x square and mod x. So can I say now that f1x can actually be defined as x square when x lies between minus 1 to 1. And of course, again, x square when x mod x is greater than 1. Dear all, mod x is greater than 1 means x greater than 1 or lesser than minus 1. So doesn't it cover everything? That means f1x is going to be just an x square function for all real values of x. Right? So f1x was quite simple. In the same way, we can all try out to find f2x. So f2x is mod x when mod x is greater than 1 and max of x square mod x when mod x is less than or equal to 1. So, dear students, I've already done the hard work by making the graph of mod x and x squared on the same coordinate axes. So here, between minus 1 to 1, so when I say mod x is less than equal to 1, that means I'm still between minus 1 to 1, I have to take that graph, which is the higher of the two. So max means higher of the two. So higher of the two is clearly mod x. So may I say that f2x is just a mod x function because when mod x is greater than 1 also it follows mod x and this also gives you mod x. So overall your function is just a mod x for all x belonging to real number. Okay, so having found out my f1 and f2, it's time to find out my f of x. So f of x is f1 minus 2 f2x. So can I say so that f1x is equal to x squared minus 2 mod x. Okay, now dear all, we have been given yet another function g of x. And g of x talks about the min max of f of t t lying between minus 3 to x and x itself varies between minus 3 to 0. And it takes max of the f of t if your t lies between 0 to x and x lies between 0 to 3. Now this is the most scary part of this problem but 
I assure you that I'll make it very easy for you to understand. So for making g of x, the first step is let's see how f of x behaves graphically. So let me draw the graph of f of x function. So I'm sure most of you have already dealt with mod functions before. And this guy x square minus 2 mod x, it behaves as x square plus 2x when x is less than 0 and it behaves as x square minus 2x when x is greater than or equal to 0. So in these two situations, let me draw the graph. For x less than 0, your graph is going to look like a parabola which is going to stop here. Yeah, getting the x-axis at minus 2. And for x greater than or equal to 0, it's again an upward opening parabola which will go like this, cutting the x-axis at plus 2. Okay, so this structure looks like a W to me. All right, now coming to my G of X. So let me write my G of X once again. Okay, so I've written the first part of the function because I want you to understand this part before we move on to the next part of the function. So here our area of Analysis is only between minus 3 to 0. Okay, so let's read the rightmost interval, which is talking about the restriction on x value. So x value is between minus 3 to 0, minus 3 included. Now, if you take any x value in this interval, then your t varies between the minus 3 to that value of x. So while you are taking that t, which is varying between minus 3 to x, you have to choose the minimum value that f of t attains. Okay, here I want everybody to pay attention because this is very, very critical. If you see this point is going to be minus 1. So please look at the graph of f of x. So f of x graph basically is a decreasing function from minus infinity to minus 1. Right. So can I say that? Till you reach minus 1, your function is always on the, on the fall. Yes or no? So can I say g of x is going to be, is going to be your f of x value because let's say if I choose the x value right here, right here, then this guy has the minimum value till from minus 3 up till that point, isn't it? Because minus 3 is higher and by the time it reaches x, the value is falling down, right? So the function achieves its least value at that x that you have chosen at that point of time. And this will happen all the way till you reach minus 1. So any x you take between minus 3 to minus 1, the value of the function at that value of x is the least of all the values that you will see of the function from minus 3 to minus 1. So can I say the function x square plus 2x itself would be the value of g of x till you reach minus 1, right? Now, between minus 1 to 0, so I've already taken care of minus 3 to minus 1. Now I have to take care of minus 1 to 0, okay? I purposely included minus 1 at both the places. Let's see what happens. Now, at minus 1, the least value that the function takes is minus 1, right? So, from minus 1 to 0, don't you realize that the least value of the function will stay at minus 1? So, can I say g of x will remain minus 1 when your x starts from minus 1 and goes all the way to 0? And it was my right decision to include minus 1 at both the places because at minus 1, you get a minus 1 from this guy also and from the second guy also, right? So you can include minus 1 at both the places without any error introduced in the function. So this defines the first part of your g of x. Can we similarly address the second part of g of x? So second part of g of x talks about the max of f of t when t lies between 0 to x and x was chosen from 0 to 3. So let's similarly try to address this as well. Okay, let's again look at the graph for this. Now here, your analysis starts from 0 and all the way till 3. So do you realize that the function drops from 0 all the way till you reach 1? 
isn't it so the maximum value of the function will be that which it has at zero yes the value of the function at zero is the max till you drop to minus one and not only that till you go to two as well right so when you go from zero to minus one the max value is zero and you go from my one to two also the max value still remains the one which is at zero or at two and both of them will give you zero my dear right so here can I say that the function is as good as a zero till you reach from zero to two. So the max value of the function is zero till you move from zero to two. Now what happens from two onwards? From two onwards, whatever x you take between two to three, at that particular instant, the function will have the maximum value, isn't it? So if I take a x over here, so at this instant, the function will have the highest value from two to that point x. So can I say that the function will basically follow the parabolic graph when you reach from two to three, okay? And two can actually be included at both the places because at two, both of them are going to give you a zero. So dear students, after this analysis, we have finally, finally got our G of X. So now let's go to our question. The question first asks you, what is the range of f of x? So the range of f of x can easily be figured out from the graph of f of x. So the range is from minus one up till plus infinity. So that answers the first part of the question. That is option number D, which is minus one to infinity. So let's move on to the second question. The first one is already done. So let's move on to the second one. The number of values of x for which g of x fails to be differentiable. So for this, I will always recommend making the graph of g of x. Now, this is not a very difficult graph to plot. It can easily be done. So let's plot the graph. So g of x follows x squared plus 2x when your x is between minus 3 to minus 1. So minus 3 to minus 1. Let's say minus 1 is here. Your function follows the graph of a parabola like this, right? At, at minus 1, it basically stops at minus one. Now from there onwards, it follows the graph of a constant function, which is minus one till you reach a zero. Okay. And mind you at zero, there is a hole because zero is not included in your function. Now from zero to two, the function is going to be a flat line on the X axis. So from zero to two, it's going to be a flat line on the X axis. So from two to three, it's again going to follow the graph of a parabola opening upwards. Now, where does the function fail to be differentiable? Of course, we know the function is going to fail to be differentiable if it shows a discontinuity at some point or it shows a corner or a cusp or a kink at some point. So here I can see there's a kind of a corner getting formed. Here I can see there's a kind of a discontinuity. And again, here we see a kind of a corner getting formed. So altogether, there are three points of non-differentiability of the function. So here it answers the second part of the question. So second part of the question, there are three points where the function is non-differentiable. So this answers the second question as well. Now I'm leaving it to my viewers to answer the third part of the question. So please do comment in the comment section. What do you think is the answer for the third part of the question? So the third question says the limit of f of g of x when x tends to zero is equal to which of the options? Zero, one, minus one or non-existent. So looking forward to your comment. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share.